It's getting harder and harder for Indian students to get jobs in Canada. Last year, 250,000 Indian students ended up going to Canada. And I'm pretty sure, you know, at least one or two people who ended up going to Canada. Just ring them up right now and ask them whether they're finding jobs easily or not. And they would probably tell you why jobs have. There are some jobs, but it's difficult to get. And then there are a lot of students who are moving to UK, but UK is also going through an economic catastrophe. Does it make sense to go to UK if you're going to a top university? Yes. Otherwise, I would probably not go to UK in current scenario. So now what is happening? My comment sections are flooded with Sweden, Finland, tell me about Norway, all these other countries. So students now want to move towards Europe, but there is a problem. Europe requires you to know the language. Any country in Europe that you're moving to wants you to learn their language. If you move to Sweden, they want you to learn Swedish. If you move to Germany, German. France, French. Italy, Italian. You have to learn the language of the land. And that's not the case with New Zealand. With New Zealand, you'll be fine. You can go to New Zealand without even learning any other language. You're just fine with English. Let me tell you how New Zealand ranks up against all the other countries so that you make an informed decision. Not a decision based on what your counselor told you, but something that you made on your own. Let me tell you about pros, cons, and why you should choose New Zealand and why you should not choose New Zealand. First thing is, it has the fourth best education system in the entire world. But now your question would be, Murad, how does that matter? That matters because New Zealand has eight universities. All these eight universities are in the world's top 3% universities. I mean, in the worst university in New Zealand is in the best top universities of the world. And how many Indian universities make up there? Honestly, it's a few. And with New Zealand, every university makes up there. Now, if you're thinking which university of New Zealand you should apply to, ideally, you can apply to any university of New Zealand. They're all good. That's why education system matters. It's not like few universities are good and rest aren't. If I talk about University of Auckland, that's amongst the best universities in the world. Top 100 QS rankings. It has like 12 courses that are in top 50 QS rankings. So Auckland is very good. But other than that, you'll be comfortable and fine going to any other university. But then New Zealand also has polytechnic institutes and much more. We'll be talking about that. Second major reason why I would choose New Zealand is because cost of education. With Australia, you would be spending somewhere around 20 to 30 lakh rupees on your, let's suppose MBA. Let's start with MBA. 20 to 30 lakh rupees. New Zealand, you would be spending 15 to 25 lakh rupees. So you're saving 5 lakh rupees. And with Canada and USA, that just goes off the roof. Canada is cheap if you're going for a PG diploma. And we know PG diploma is not worth going for. You know that. If you don't know that by now, what are you doing? You're dumb. You're not following good... Dude, are you subscribed to this channel? If you're not, oh yeah, you're not subscribed. What are you doing? Third thing is getting into New Zealand universities is comparatively easy. With Canada, there are a lot of things that you have to do with your profile. With USA, you have to get a GRE, GMAT, you have to get TOEFL, IELTS, a lot of things. With New Zealand, the requirements are slightly low. But I always recommend students that just because the requirements are easier does not mean that you should go and take admission there. But at the same time, it is simpler. But I would also ask you to apply to Kiwi universities because they sometimes give out scholarships also. Let me give you a list of scholarships that you have to apply to. For undergraduate, you have to apply to Tungareva Scholarship, International Student Excellence Scholarship, International Excellence Scholarship, AUT International Excellence Scholarship, UC International First Year Undergraduate Scholarship. For Masters, you have to apply to ADV Japan Scholarship Program for Developing Countries in Asia and Pacific, ADB Scholarship, Sir Neil Isaac Scholarship in Environmental Sciences, ASEAN Scholarship. For MBA, you have to apply to Dean Senior Prize Masters of Business Administration, Forte Fellowship, Course Masters Scholarship, MBA Awards, and Alison McGibbons fund. Now you have this entire list. Go back, take a screenshot and keep this with you. At the same time, if you need help with applying to New Zealand universities, me and my team will help you with that. Go to the description, fill the form. My team will get in touch with you. We will help you with admission in a top university in New Zealand. If you're looking for a lower end university, sorry, please don't come to us. We don't do lower end universities. We just work with top universities. Next reason why I might choose New Zealand is because right now there are 90,000 students that are studying in New Zealand who are international students. 90,000 sounds like a good number and they want to make it one. 50,000 by 2025. They're increasing numbers. They do understand that immigration is important. When there are countries like Canada and UK asking students to go out, pushing students out, making it more and more expensive for students. Countries like New Zealand, France and some other countries inviting students. Now let's talk practically who should be going. Which course should you select in New Zealand? That's the most practical question. If you're not in this list, probably get in touch with my team once, ask them what is the scope in New Zealand and then only go ahead with it. Otherwise, don't. But these courses 
Otherwise, you'll be fine with New Zealand. First would be engineering, be it civil to computer science. With New Zealand, Auckland specifically, it is in the top 100 cities of the world that are growing and you'll be fine with engineering. So if you're an engineer, yes, I would definitely apply to Auckland. Second would be information technology. In New Zealand alone, growth rate for information technology is 12%. So IT is a good option to select. And specifically, University of Ekatu. Third would be business and management related courses. If you're going to University of Canterbury, you'll be doing fine for yourself. And lastly, tourism and hospitality management. It is a $40 billion industry in New Zealand and growing. It requires more and more people. People are moving to Canada for tourism and hospitality. They don't end up finding jobs. But in a country like New Zealand, you'll be sort of fine. Not too good, but comparatively very fine. Two major pros, which I'll not dwell a lot about because you probably do understand this. Safety and at the same time, work-life balance. Best work-life balance across OECD countries amongst the best developing countries. It has the best work-life balance and at the same time, it's really safe. And I shouldn't even be taking out time and explaining how important these two points is. If you're only considering high salaries in USA, I would highly recommend you to check out peacefulness as an important indicator. But since I've painted such a rosy picture, let me tell you about the cons of New Zealand also. First, it is far. It's just far from everywhere. If you're in Germany, you can travel the entire world and it would be very easy for you. From New Zealand, it would be oceans apart. Everything other than Australia is oceans apart. And yes, literally oceans apart. Second, it's small. You will run out of places to go to. You would probably go to Christchurch, Wellington and a few other cities. You're done. You're covered entire New Zealand. You can spend a lot of time in north of New Zealand and south of New Zealand. And that's it. That's barely what you can do in your entire lifetime. So if you're planning to move there for a lifetime, that would slightly be a smaller place that you're moving to, as opposed to again, Germany or USA, where you have a lot of places to visit. Third con, if you're doing a diploma, ideally the post-study work visa is not that strong. If you're doing a master's or a proper bachelor's program, then you do end up getting a three-year post-study, oh wait, three-year post-study work visa. I have talked about all of that in this video, where I talk about New Zealand, its education system and everything. You should watch this video. And yeah, if you need help from my team, go to the description. This video has everything.